Hey everybody, welcome to the finale of What If All Might Was Born in the Dragon Ball Z World. And before we begin, I'm OG Brown Nerd, hello, and if you're a fan of everything nerdy, Dragon Ball, What Ifs, Marvel, DC, please subscribe because we got plenty of content incoming. The Earth enjoys five years of peace after the Buu Saga, and during this time skip, All Might actually decides to join the Kais for their training. He wants to see how big the universe is and expand his own knowledge. Now on Earth, Gohan and Deku continue protecting the planet, growing closer with their love interests, eventually marrying them. Deku and the Great Saiyaman are regarded as the greatest champions of Earth, and their power continues to grow exponentially as Gohan eventually unlocks Super Saiyan 3, inspired by the fight Goku and Vegeta had, and Deku's mastery of one for all is all but complete at this point. Vegeta focuses on mastering the Super Saiyan 3 form for his eventual rematch with Goku. Him and Raditz grow closer during this time. Piccolo eventually decides to visit the planet Namek, reconnecting with his roots and to also find a replacement for Kami. The two of them have decided to fuse together, but not until they find someone to replace the role of Guardian and Keeper of the Dragon Balls. On the Kai's world, All Might is frequently joined by Goku. Toshinori picks him up and drops him off instantly with the Kai Kai, one of the first techniques he learned from Shin. Now of course during this special training, eventually Old Kai is going to be freed from the Z-Sword, offering both All Might and Goku to have their potential unlocked. Goku declines, but All Might, he's intrigued. What exactly would this do for him? His max potential was wielding one for all. Will his body return back to its enhanced state again? Old Kai actually doesn't know as All Might presents an interesting case. After the completed ritual, All Might doesn't feel any different. Goku tells him to try and power up like he does when he goes Super Saiyan. All Might channels his ki going into his enhanced form, but this time he's able to maintain it. The potential unlock reinforced his body in a similar way to One for All. This form is exhausting to maintain as All Might is older, but he can feel like his old self again, even if briefly. Goku is helping All Might train one day on the Kai planet when suddenly two beings arrive. The Kais immediately freeze up when they realize it's Lord Beerus and his attendant Whis. Beerus approaches asking if Goku is the Saiyan that defeated Frieza, he then questions if he's the Super Saiyan God. Goku confused asks what's a Super Saiyan God. Beerus approaches Goku sensing trace amount of God Ki in his system, perhaps spending all this time with the Kais has given him this power. Goku's excitement continues to grow as the Kais tell him that Beerus is the strongest fighter in the universe. He's itching for one, it's been a while since he's had a real fight. Beerus spars with Goku, humiliating him, despite his massive boost compared to canon. All Might is in awe of Beerus' techniques. His power is something he didn't even know could exist. Goku gets up as Beerus gets ready to leave for the Earth, curious to test the Saiyans there. His vision, it can't be wrong. All Might offers to teleport them instantly, they arrive during Bulma's party. Raditz, Gohan, Vegeta all get tested against Beerus, even Deku steps up, impressing him with his vast range of attacks. Fajin makes Deku one of the worthiest fighters. Goku and All Might watch as Beerus dismantles everyone with no difficulty. Now Beerus is satisfied with the battles he's had, but he was really looking forward to battling the Super Saiyan God. Goku has an idea, asking Dende if the dragon is ready to be summoned. Goku summons the upgraded Shenron who explains the ritual and Goku gets chosen, becoming the vessel for this power. Goku battles Beerus and it's legendary, exactly what Beerus wanted, but of course Goku eventually fails. All Might and Vegeta catch Goku as he falls while Beerus tells Whis that he hasn't used this much power in a long time, the Saiyans have potential. And while Whis looks interested in the Saiyans, he seems particularly interested about All Might, this mortal seems to be an old man but his transformation is interesting. He also seems to have trace amount of god ki in his system. He may be the best candidate to becoming the next god of destruction. Shortly after Battle of Gods, Whis returns, offering All Might the chance to train with him. Goku, Raditz, and Vegeta all join him. Gohan and Deku are more than sufficient enough to protect the Earth. Even Goten and Trunks could handle anything thrown their way at this point. They've been sidekicking with Deku and Gohan. On Beerus' world, Whis trains the Saiyans and All Might, trying to get them to master Ultra Instinct. He's trying to craft the perfect God of Destruction candidate. All Might and Goku seem to be the closest ones to it, as their martial arts mastery is above the others. 
Vegeta and Raditz, their Saiyan pride sewn into their very core, can't accept relinquishing the control. Beerus brings Vegeta and Raditz under his tutelage. He realizes he needs to train if he's going to keep ahead of the Saiyans. Meanwhile, on Earth, the Frieza Force tries to resurrect Frieza, but with Deku and Gohan there, there's no chance. The boys destroy them, but Bulma actually takes some of their technology, looking to study it, maybe find the locations of their bases. She's going to pass the information onto the Galactic Patrol so they can finally get rid of them. But she's stunned when she actually discovers a stress signal, a very old one, and she contacts Whis to ask All Might if he can teleport to that location. All Might agrees and he brings Goku and Whis together while Beerus snaps and Vegeta and Raditz spar. They end up on this weird planet called Vampa. It actually doesn't seem like there's a Frieza Force base here, but they do sense an immense power coming from near the caves. All Might and Goku approach and they see Broly eating some big bug and Whis is shocked. Another Saiyan? That's interesting. Goku's ears perk up. Another Saiyan? How? Paragus then rushes out on guard, but All Might assures him they aren't here to fight. They immediately notice Broly's shock collar and question Paragus, who tells them that Broly's power is unstoppable. They can't control him without it. Broly looks uncomfortable with the collar and yanks it, causing Paragus to shock him. Goku instinctively slaps the remote away, breaking it, and he rips off Broly's collar. All Might asks why they are here, and that's when Paragus recounts the story of how King Vegeta exiled Broly here because of his freakish power. Whis offers to bring them back to the prince. He's curious to see Broly's power, and he knows there's going to be a fight. They return to Beerus' world, where Paragus, upon seeing Vegeta, begins yelling and berating him. Calling King Vegeta a coward, Vegeta is taken back and responds in kind, pushing Paragus down. This causes Broly to fly at Vegeta, and Whis tells everyone not to step in. Let Vegeta handle Broly. It's a good test of strength for both of them. Vegeta and Broly begin to fight, and Broly's techniques are wild, while Vegeta's movements are much more fluid. The prince easily overpowers Broly, but Broly begins to snap. Vegeta decides to end this fight quickly, transforming into a Super Saiyan, and Paragus is stunned. Broly doesn't back down. He transforms into his Ikari form. The fight continues to escalate as more and more of Beerus' planet is destroyed. Vegeta transforms into Super Saiyan 3, the pinnacle of Saiyan power, and Broly, without having Paragus die, is unable to push himself into the legendary Super Saiyan form. He gets knocked out cold by Vegeta. Vegeta is impressed at Broly's power. He held his own despite not knowing how to transform into a Super Saiyan. He returns asking Paragus what his father did and when Paragus tells him, Vegeta scoffs, calling his father a weak old fool. That despite Broly's mutation, he is not stronger than the prince. He assures Paragus he is not his father and he welcomes the challenge. Paragus is taken back by the prince's word, and he sees that he is true to it. All Might tells Paragus that Broly can stay here. They'll teach him how to harness his power, but he has to be the one to let him go, finally trusting Broly. Paragus sees the unconscious body of his son and goes to him, waking him up, telling him to listen to these warriors, that they will help him. All Might takes Paragus to Earth, where he gets set up with his own capsule house. Now with Broly there to spar with, the Saiyan's power levels get boosted to insane levels, unlocking Super Saiyan God, then Blue. All Might learns to harness God Key, and it reinforces his body even more so. His raw power without One For All now is astonishing. He may even be stronger than he was in his prime. He can now hold his ultimate form for a significant amount of time. Even without it, his body's power is tremendous. So now, speedrun, the Universe 6 tournament is an absolute wash because the team of All Might, Raditz, Goku, Vegeta, and Broly is simply too much. Now this would lead to Zamasu swapping bodies with one of them. Now with this swap, the Saiyans are always on Beerus' planet at this point. So the moment Zamasu arrives, he's getting jumped. Eventually, whoever Zamasu swapped bodies with would get reversed. And then it's time for the Tournament of Power. Universe 7's team is absolutely broken. We have All Might, Deku, Gohan, Goku, Vegeta, Raditz, Broly, Goten, Trunks, and Piccolo. It's not even close, and when it comes time to face Jiren, Goku triggers his UI like usual, but when he fails, All Might steps up, stopping Jiren from KOing him. All Might transforms into his ultimate form, summoning all of his power, he begins to fight Jiren. The God Key amplifying his movements and speed. As he fights, he begins to slow his breathing, anticipating Jiren's movements. Jiren's fight with Goku showed All Might the beauty of UI and how it felt. This is everything All Might's been training for. It's why Master Mutaito entrusted one for all with him. He may no longer be the symbol of peace publicly, but in his heart, he still is. 
he has to defeat Jiren to protect the world. No, to protect his universe. The passionate umbers begin to flicker within him, roaring into a fire as his eyes turn silver. All Might transcends his limits, going ultra instinct. The gods are shocked. How is this possible? Two mortals? And All Might's form seems to be even more stable than Goku's was. All Might begins pushing Jiren back while Goku finds his footing, seeing his friend take on this monster. Vegeta and Raditz, not being surpassed, quickly finish their fights transforming into Super Saiyan Blue, and Vegeta unveils his Ultra Ego. Together, they begin to push Jiren back further and further as he unleashes more of his power. Gohan and Deku join as well, landing combination smashes, but it's ultimately All Might who lands the finishing blow. All Might channels all of his powers, his memories, all of his experiences, and hits Jiren with a Universe 7 smash, sending Jiren flying into the oblivion. Jiren holding back cost him dearly. Now the rest of the tournament is a clean sweep for Universe 7 because between all the Saiyans and their power, they individually surpass most universes. Like bro, they have a controlled Broly. It's a wrap. At the end, All Might is declared the MVP, and being who he is, he wishes everyone back. The symbol of peace holds his fist up as he knows his master would have been proud of the person he became. Whis looks on proud. All Might is the clear candidate for the next God of Destruction. But this is what I think would happen if All Might was born in the Dragon Ball Z world. Thank you so, so much for watching and commenting and liking every time I post. Please let me know what you guys thought about this scenario down in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more. Peace.